Four Pillar Sports, a podcast for sports fans, made by sports fans. Join Chris and Randy every week as they dive deep into football, basketball, baseball, and professional wrestling. Catch for Pillar Sports on all major platforms. And remember, keep on talking sports. This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Age of Radio. Oh hey Brennan, hey, how's it going? You all uh all set to, to record this 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 Twilight? Should be f- fun. Okay, no, see Brennan, you, you gotta do more than just look at me. It's oh I get you're doing that the Mariah thing where she does visual jokes for for the for the audio only podcast. That's that's cool. I, but seriously, I think we really need to get to this because, man, this was a chore for me, I swear. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you got a few good quips, right? You see, now there you, there you go with the, the those furtive <laughs> glances again. Brendan, it's, it's, it's not, you know, what we need to do or we need to actually, uh, you need to go back and, and, and forth. You just need to, to say something. Just say a joke, Brendan. Come on. Okay, Brendan, you've you've got to. It's it's an audio look. Look, if this is about the the whole pumpkin head thing, I'm sorry. Okay, it was a joke. All right, you just just you need to say you need we need to talk about this podcast. It's this movie. It's and it's. Ter- I beseech you, Brendan. Please just make a quip. I I. Did you just fucking fall asleep? You know when I pick a movie That's when I'm under pressure now The question always comes back to me What were they thinking now? To, uh, uh, stop that podcast. I, I'm gonna, I'll get the cattle. Prod. I actually find this offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, who's that? Uh, <laughs> this is a uh, this is a podcast you, you are listening to right now. It is a podcast about bad to questionable movies, and uh, I'm sure w- one of us will will argue hard against that very concept. But uh, this is a, what were they thinking? I am Brendan, and joining me, of course, is the the Edward to my Bella. It's uh, <sighs> go ahead and introduce yourself. You know that's that's why Hall of Famers think we're married. You say things like you could have said Jacob. You easily could have said Jacob. Yeah, I'm Nathan, by the way. But I didn't want to get. I didn't want. I didn't want to whitewash your uh, your role on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Nathan. We are talking about, of course. We are finally doing it. We are finally talking about the 2008 blo- vampire blockbuster. Uh, not not like vampires that worked at Blockbuster, as in the, the blood suckers that would try to get your rental fees, your late and fees. And your rewind fees, right? Yeah. Let, tell, let me, give, give me 20 minutes on them. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, no one's been inside of a Blockbuster in over a decade. Wait, what? What happened? Oh, just a little thing. Okay, cool. Called Netflix. <laughs> Joining us, returning to the show, somehow she agreed to come back after we talked about cats, but she's back, ladies and gentlemen. The very uh, next day, we <laughs> thought she was a goner, but, but, the, but the guest came back, <laughs> she just couldn't stay away. She couldn't, and her name, of course, is Amanda the Jedi. Welcome! Yeah, thanks for having me. The only reason why I agreed to do this is because it's Twilight. So, oh, wow. and I'm here not because not because I think it's a bad movie, but because I think it's like it's just enjoyable. It's not great, but it's great. You know, it's one of those. 
right, so would you put this on the, on par with like a, a maximum overdrive or more of the room? Um, I don't I think it's its own thing. Like Twilight is in its renaissance right now. It is just its own thing of teen what? lore. Yeah. We are starting with some some hot Oh, there is uh, no denying that Twilight is in its renaissance right now. Renaissance. There's no okay. denying. All right. Gotcha. You can't. Oh. It is. It is I'm... more popular now than it's been probably since 2008, honestly. <sighs> I am so mm. excited to talk about this movie. <laughs> Do you know how much money I make from Twilight right now in 2021? It's a lot, okay? It's a lot. <laughs> Listen, we're not trying to hurt your Twilight money. We're just here to talk about a, a, a questionable. Can we at least say questionable? Very film? questionable. I think we can. I think we can safely call it some of the choices oh, yeah. questionable. <laughs> For sure. Well, I mean, in in also to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. It's questionable source material too. I mean, really, when you get right down to it. Okay, now now Amanda's got full guard up. Well, because <laughs> now it's like it, now it's going to get into a conversation of like nuance. There's a nuance conversation around Twilight and things that it's like it's the same shit when like little boys are like, but Twilight, like fucking Transformers is awesome because I love Transformers. It's there's nuance. There's nuance to the conversations. Right. Even though I will never say that. Is dog shit. <laughs> what that you, that you love Transformers? <laughs> the, I, if I was a little kid, yes, I would say that. That's what um, I'm, I'm saying. 80s, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have loved Transformers. Now I would never ever say, you know what? Them Michael Bay movies, they're something. I tell you in a good way. <laughs> There's different levels. There's different levels. Uh, I tell you, those those Michael Bay Transformers movies really ruined the sanctity of the cartoon series. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> such a well put together program. Uh, okay, look, we could talk about this for an hour alone, not talking about the Transformers. Movie. Yes, for sure. No, the the <laughs> nuance of of what makes people like certain things and oh, fandoms, its popularity, yes. fandoms. Yeah, and... you don't. You're. I, I'm. <clears throat> I'm a Gamera fan in a world of Godzilla fans, so you don't really have too much to explain. Oh, to me there regards. you go. So, explain your fandom. <laughs> And let's just say right off the bat, regardless of how you feel about this movie, that the reaction to this movie from the people that didn't like it was over the top, to put it, it was. lightly, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think because it turned memes to out of it, it, though. it was well, the memes are really good now. At the time, it was really just kind of like people hadn't watched it. People didn't care. It was just like, oh, this is like a bunch of stuff that like like teen girls are really into must suck. Must be terrible. It doesn't matter that they're driving box office views and whatever oh, you can get teen yeah. girls you to know like is yeah. Who was also super into it other than teen and preteen girls? Uh moms. soccer moms. Yeah. yeah, soccer moms yeah. loved it. And you know what? And then they got their own series, Fifty Shades of Grey. Coming soon. <laughs> Awful. In men in Ooh, double meaning. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, because again, this movie, uh, relatively small budget. Uh, I'm assuming these sequels have a much bigger budget because this one cost thirty seven million dollars and in the in North America or at least in the US alone, four hundred and seven million dollars. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the lowest grossing one, I'm guessing. Well, I, I uh... would say that, that's pretty even bet considering the, the whole thing plays out as one giant story, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there are five. Five There's yeah, five of, of them, yeah. So, Twilight. Amanda, yeah. Um, yeah. you have a history with this kind of, I guess. I do. I'm part of the Renaissance. I <laughs> was part of that ride. <clears throat> so does that mean like yeah. you have a bunch of paintings? Is that, the, is that kind of Renaissance? <laughs> no, it's just like at, at some point people grew up and were like, you know, it's okay that we can also, we can make fun of this because there are so many aspects of this that are fucking ridiculous. Mm. But we can also just like it at the same time. So there's this like very interesting dynamic of like ironically liking something and I unironically liking aspects of it at the exact same time that is building into this like renaissance where there are entire meme pages for Twilight where like the Twilight like verified Twitter account is getting like shit tons of retweets and stuff because people are just into it. They're like, you guys made fun of us for liking this seriously 10 years ago. So now we're going to say, fuck you. We're bringing it back. Uh, and then there was like the whole side aspect of like um, she finally released the book from Edward's perspective, which is fucking ridiculous. There's so much ridiculous <laughs> stuff in the history of Twilight, oh but that's not even the worst one. The worst one is gender bent Twilight. That's heard, the yeah. worst thing. 
Yeah. Do you yep. remember That's when a- we got Jason <clears throat> on for Wing Commander? I feel like we're going to be in that type of situation this episode. Yeah. Listen. He, a- he, he asked an expert. I have, like, entrenched myself in this because... <laughs> I don't know. It's like a very interesting spectacle. And then like uh, another one of those ones, she's an, like in terms of an author, she's probably like one of, the, I'm assuming most of her beliefs are like really terrible. She's just usually smart enough to shut up about them because yeah. she's a Mormon. She's, she's a Mormon. Got- so like, you know, she probably doesn't like gay people very much. There's probably all sorts of things that she, you know, like she went to like the Brigham Young University level Mormon. So, so what you're, uh, what you're saying is she's she got, does, doesn't, how do you write about vampires and not include gay Be- people? Um, <laughs> no, she did because they somebody asked if the wolves could imprint on other like men, and she basically said no, that would be stupid and wouldn't make sense. So it was like really, it was the way she implied it. In this movie about vampires and and werewolves and uh, and and sparkles, yeah. that just wouldn't make sense. A gay person, what? <laughs> like, like to clarify my incredulity earlier about not including gay people when you're talking when you're writing vampires. I'm not saying that in a derogatory way. No. In fact, some of the best uh, gay positive stuff I've ever seen on TV has been in, in regards to like yeah. stuff like True Blood. Right. Yeah. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put that clear that. Oh out. no no, oh, no I get, I got where you were coming from. Yeah. Plot. Basic plot of this movie is um, Bella. This is it. She's she's a girl. She goes to high school. She's uh, she's very sad. She's very sad a lot of the time. And I'm not sure why. She well, I mean, <laughs> teenagers are issues. sad. Okay. She's got some issues Good. with her with her parental units. Um, and, and she goes to this high school. She falls for a guy in a bad word. He's very mysterious, <laughs> and uh, she finds out that uh, I don't know, guys. About 90 minutes into this movie, it's confirmed that he's a vampire, and uh, and other vampires come after her, and hilarity ensues. Most definitely. That's pretty much the plot. Yep. <laughs> what yeah. were they thinking? See you next week, folks. Oh, all right. Well, Amanda, it's just you and me now, I guess. <laughs> what they were thinking was, wow, we're going to make so much fucking money. Oh, well, I can't deny that. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm pretty sure they didn't think they were going to make money, which is why the first one had such a low budget. Mm. And then they were like, oh, shit. This is we, a thing. <laughs> we can't, somebody make me a CGI baby for the sequel. Oh, oh and that, that was super oh, that was, realistic and cool. Yeah, no, the CGI baby was the backup plan after the first plan backfired. Oh, well. The, the doll was plan one. Jesus. Somebody, Chuck Esme. Break the like, doll or something? No, it was so horrendously unrealistic that, and it scared everyone. But there's some test footage around of this fucking sixty-pound horrific child doll. How do you not include that in a book about vampires and werewolves? There's got to be some horror. Come on. I'm sorry. It turns into a body horror if you didn't watch the last, the no, part one I've, of the I've last. I've seen this. I've seen this one. Okay, well, the ending of part one, Breaking Dawn, it turns into a fucking body horror, like straight up. Yes, because I hear uh, she gives birth. I remember the girls at work talking about yeah. it at the time. <laughs> I just Brody. picture, I would just picture a, a fucking, a fucking a circle around the uh, the water fountain. You hear about that? You see that Bella picture? <laughs> <laughs> she gives birth in this one. I'm also assuming that you work with all twenties gangsters. Yeah, yeah. All for some reason, all the soccer moms in my department talk like slick twenties gangsters. Yeah, so you see that twilight? Oh, here's a pocket full of mayonnaise. You see? What are you, Team Edward or Team Jacob? Huh? Eh? <laughs> so we start off. Look, if you we... tell me you're Team Edward, I'll put the screws to you. You see? <laughs> yeah, anyway, sorry. You we we start off in the tiny town of Forks. What state is this in again? Washington. 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 Okay, Forks. And Washington. mostly denial. <laughs> Forks, Washington. <laughs> a tiny town of a few thousand people. Uh, Bella decides to stay with her dad, who is na- who is Charlie, played by Billy Burke, who I think gives the best performance in the movie. <laughs> For sure, I-, yeah. I thought he was really good, honestly. Oh, he's Not great. since Drive Angry have I been so engrossed by one of his performances. <clears throat> yeah, he knew it. The he was like, "I'm here. This is a thing that's happening right now. Let's just." I'm dejected, Dad, in the movie, so I get to just be dejected in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so she's staying with him while her mother and um, a minor league baseball player stepdad is just going on the road, I guess. Yep. <laughs> I want to see that movie. The, the, uh, I'm not lying. 
<laughs> well, Amanda, you know about all the books, uh, including the Edward POV. Is there yeah. a book where we follow them? No, Phil well, is like rarely ever. Actually, uh, I am told that uh, Phil is actually one of the side characters in Moneyball. So if you watch Moneyball, that's what? a lie. That's a bold faced oh. lie. Oh, okay. <laughs> you had me going. I thought Moneyball was based on actual it is. events. It is. It is. Yeah, yeah, just like Twilight. That's a b- yeah, that's a b- exactly. <laughs> just like Twilight. Yeah. Fuck off, friends. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Bella and her dad that has seemed to have a very stilted relationship. Um, he's a bit awkward. He doesn't quite know how to talk to her. You know, sales lady picked out the bed stuff. You're like purple, right? That kind of thing. <laughs> That's typical, uh, yeah, dad type stuff that happened in the you know '90s and 2000s. Yeah, they, I they, found they, that believable. They they have some yeah. good they have some good chemistry, and I w- I will state oh, this too right off the bat. The other big thing that people could not stop talking about when Twilight came out is that Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson are like the worst actors in the world, you guys. And it's like, no, they're fine. I'm not going they're that not. far. They literally <laughs> they acted exactly how they were told to act, how yeah. they're written in the books, yep. and what was required of them. The, the director so. said, "Be sad and action," and that's what they did. <laughs> and say, say this stilted, unnatural dialogue as sadly as possible. Yeah, he almost <laughs> got fired for trying to play it more creepy. Pattinson. Yeah, Pattinson. Okay. There's like footage of him. He's come around on Twilight now, but it's like he used to shit on them like relent, like unrelentingly. It was, I'm not going to lie. That was kind of funny to see those interviews oh, yeah. where he was just like, fuck that. Anyway, what else do you want to ask? He's like, I'm basically a sociopath and she goes along with it. It's fucking crazy. I don't know what's wrong with Stephanie Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> so, she had this dream of the meadow and like, I think she thinks she's Bella. <laughs> uh, we meet Charlie's friend, mm-hmm. Billy Black, who's played by a real Native American. His son, Jacob, is not played by a what? real Native American. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I, no, not they, no, they had to do they had to do some kind of like retcon look and be like if you go back x number of generations there's this much somewhere in his family bloodline yeah something like that he's yeah i don't know if he's the i don't know if he's the required 1 16th but uh yeah i don't think so it's very distant but either way uh it's maybe not as offensive as the as the representation in the the lone ranger uh disney movie <laughs> absolutely not yes right. <laughs> but yeah so jacob is there or for by- vampires in this movie i'm also gonna put that out there <laughs> hashtag glitter wash that's all i'm saying I, glitter face that's what he was wearing i'm just oh, wow anyhow go god yeah. i'm just getting right are you trying here. to cancel everyone <laughs> just, hopefully twilight Jeez. anyhow oh i can feel the 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 tension in the air amanda's <laughs> literally sharpening her knife right now I am like, I'm getting the claws ready. I'm like, whew. Uh, so yeah, so Charlie is, uh, he's got his friend Billy Black there. Um, Jacob, again, Taylor Lautner, just kind of creepily stares at Bella for most of the time and says, hey, remember when we used to make mud pies when we were kids? Gross. <laughs> also in front of the truck that her dad just gave her. I don't know why this girl is sad. Oh, she yeah. She's actually really excited when she gets the truck, though. Yeah. yeah. She's like, oh my God, this is awesome. <laughs> that was... <laughs> What? Kristen oh Stewart my God, here? Mr. Carter. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. I know, but it sounds like it sounds like uh, Travolta in the seventies doing Kristen Stewart. <laughs> yeah, you know, it does. <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> yes, oh my by God, the way, my soul burns. <laughs> I'm on antibiotics. <laughs> yeah, plug, plug it, plug, plug, plug it. the drug you're using. <laughs> uh, doxycycline. <laughs> Get your doxycycline, folks. Yeah. Ask for now, remember, name. antibiotics can counteract birth control, kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Little PSA from what were they thinking? Oh, I don't know what's <laughs> going on anymore. So anyway, Dude, my, um, let's not talk about this movie. <laughs> J- Jacob uh, doesn't break eye contact either. Uh, they talk about going to school. He says, you know, I go to school on the reservation. Again, reminding us that he's playing Native American. <laughs> um, uh, Bella goes to school. But funny, hilarious moment here, I thought anyway, because Bella goes to school in her truck. And this guy, you know, sarcastically says, nice ride. And then you hear someone else say, genuinely, good one, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's the funny thing is, though, that, that whole thing sets it up like there's going to be this weird tension between her and everybody else at school and that is immediately not the case yeah everyone's just so horny for a new person right (laughs) yeah like (laughs) this one guy who's like (laughs) you know sweet ride maybe ironically 
I'm not even totally sure well, given all was... the stuff that happens afterwards because everybody at school is super nice to her. Yeah, it's almost like one of those Even movies... Anna Kendrick. It's, it was it's a almost... neg. It's it almost one neg. of those movies where um, where you think like uh, this town has like a big secret. <laughs> They're just like yeah. a little too welcoming. It's like uh, yeah. the town in Hot Fuzz or something. It's like, what's yeah. really going on here? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, B- Bella also meets Eric, who introduces himself as the shoulder to cry on. Uh, <laughs> she says, I'd rather suffer in silence, which is probably the most Bella line in this movie, I think, anyway. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> uh, she has a, uh, she's in gym class, and she has like a, a, a fake out meet cute moment with this guy named Mike Newton, who is the worst. Um <laughs> And, and and apparently, like, immediately he's like, you know, I must have her. But Anna mm-hmm. Kendrick is also in this movie, and she wants him. Who is so much better than this. Oh, she's great At the time, movie, she wasn't. Well, no, she has always been better than this. Yeah, but she hadn't done anything at this point. She's Anna Kendrick. She's yeah, but this is why she's Anna always. Kendrick. This is Even why she's Anna Kendrick. Even if people didn't know that she was better than this, she was better than this at the time. So, was most pe- so are most people in this movie. Fair. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like nobody's nobody's like. I mean, y- you said most. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. There is one of <laughs> that maybe didn't go on to such great height uh, of fame, but <laughs> but mostly everybody in this movie turned out pretty good. Um, so yeah, I, they're at least making a living. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some of them only off Twilight, but it's fine. They're doing great. <laughs> um, a lot, a lot of people don't have, seem to have boundaries at the school because one guy just walks up and ki- runs up and kisses Bella on the cheek. And I'm like, uh, okay, dude, come on. And then at lunchtime, the Cullens show up. What? And they all enter like slow motion. Everyone's swooning. Anna Kendrick is basically <laughs> saying how they're all fucking each other. Who are they? The Cullens. They're, um... Dr. and Mrs. Collins' foster kids. They moved down here from Alaska, like, a few years ago. They kind of keep to themselves. Yeah, because they're all together. Like, together, together. Um, the blonde girl, that's Rosalie, and the big dark-haired guy, Emmett, they're like a thing. I'm not even sure that's legal. Yes, they're not actually related. Yeah, but they live together, it's weird. And. The little dark-haired girl is Alice. She's really weird. And um, she's with Jasper, the blonde one who looks like he's in pain. Um, Dr. Collins like this foster dad slash matchmaker. <laughs> Maybe he'll adopt me. Who's he? <sighs> That's Edward Cullen. <laughs> Totally gorgeous, obviously. But apparently nobody here is good enough for him. <laughs> like I care, you know. <laughs> but she's also giving all of their names, and I noted here I'm not committing any of these to memory. Oh, well, okay, maybe Jasper. I guess <laughs> them all. Well, that's okay, Nathan, because we'll only hear their names two hundred times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did you uh, did you notice that Emmett walks in with a bag filled with hard boiled eggs? <laughs> no, it didn't. No. Yeah, the the big burly one walks in, and what he's carrying is a bag full of hard boiled eggs. Even though he's not going to eat them as a vampire, but apparently somebody told me it's because the actor was going to eat them. So they were just like, "Sure, you're big and buff. You would eat a bag full of hard boiled eggs what? for lunch." Yeah, that doesn't make any sense because we do find out later that they don't eat actual food. Yeah, but they have to make um, it look like they eat food at school. They have to have it like in front of them, I and then suppose? they just throw it out. They have to throw it out, but yeah, yeah, so. He doesn't eat it on camera. He just walks in the cafeteria with the bag. <laughs> big bag of eggs. If, if, this, if, this were, if this were like a, you know, a YouTube show and not just a, an audio podcast, this is where we put up the more you know mm. thing yeah, from NBC. Just, yeah, exactly. Just look up Emmett Hardboiled Eggs and you will, you will be blessed. <laughs> oh, what did you bring today? Oh, just a bag of eggs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like twelve. It's it's a lot of eggs. I know it's just like oh, like a like a tote bag. No, no, just this plastic Walmart bag full of Gonna loose have eggs. Lunch with Yokozuna. <laughs> Wrestling reference. Got it in. Secured. 
Uh, but yeah, and then, yeah, so she's talking about all the Cullens, but then more importantly, Edward Cullen walks in, and Anna Kendrick is all, nobody here is good enough for him. <laughs> like, I care, right? <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> mm. and so everyone everyone wants to fuck the pants off this guy. Um, <laughs> they, the, the first of many uh, long furtive glances between... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Bella and Edward. Start a drinking game if you're watching this. Oh. Any furtive glance, you'll yeah. be you'll be going to the hospital with alcohol poisoning by the 45 minute mark. I actually just read a bit of IMDb trivia here. Um, if you take out all the furtive glances in the film, it would be 17 <laughs> minutes long. <laughs> Sounds about right. That's crazy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they're looking at each other from across the room and then she goes to class later, like, I don't know, science class or something. And he's like her lab partner. Science. And as she comes in the room, there's like this fan and it's blowing her hair, but it's also seems to be Ugh. blowing him away. Stank face. <laughs> Stank face. I was just like, oh, his like boner's blowing up. It just looks like he's like hiding his erection. <laughs> well, well, at first when I saw this, um, I was like, oh, come on with this slow-mo garbage. This is like straight out of a white snake video or something. But then when you find out later, the fan actually probably uh, did rile him up quite a bit because he does say later that he's never wanted to actually drink anyone's blood more than hers. Mm, yes. It, it mm-hmm. pushed her, her scent into his uh, nostrils. Right yeah. into his olfactories. <laughs> and I will say that that from his perspective in the book is hilarious. It is uh- like, but five pages of him trying to like figure out how he could kill the entire class, then enjoy her Jeez. before someone could scream. If he should do her first, if, you know, it's like how he should just go to her house after school. Like it's <laughs> ridiculous. Sticky Myers thinks she is J.R. Tolkien. <laughs> <laughs> See, I feel like in that version of the movie, um, <laughs> maybe, maybe we wouldn't be talking about it today, <laughs> Something like that. or maybe in a different way. Um, <laughs> So yeah, his his stare is intense. He's like staring <laughs> at her, and and I, I'm just it, like, you know what this it, is sorry. It, you know what it reminded me of? Uh, one of the more recent episodes of Saturday Night Live where Remy Malik hosted, but he played Pete Davidson, and <laughs> Pete Davidson played him, and he kept like, stop staring at me, Remy Malik. That's I feel the energy that she should have been deliver been <laughs> act as a real person would have at this point because he is just staring soullessly at her yeah and yeah. Then, and then and she's later- like oh my god do i stink like do we <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then later when he's like clearly trying to get out of the class and not sit by her she's just like mm, he he immediately rejected everything everything from me in every single way i must have him <laughs> but again teenagers i have two daughters this movie actually kind of upsets me in regards to the the relationship she's going after Ugh. It, I bet you're Team Jacob, but it's because you haven't seen the rest of the movies where you will realize that Jacob is worse. Don't worry, Nathan. You will. <laughs> Shut up, Brandon. <laughs> so yeah, um, that happens. <laughs> they, they sit together, and he's acting very, very strange. Um, he also keeps like no showing for a while. He's just like not showing up to class, and Bella's like, "Who is this mystery man?" Um, meanwhile, we cut to some construction worker just getting totally attacked and ripped apart off screen. Uh, so we're like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. PG-13. Stuff is happening. Yeah. Very PG-13. Like, like (laughs) almost PG, honestly. Because there's like, there's no blood, I don't think, in this movie. No, it's for, uh, one scene of sexual suggestion. I can't remember how Netflix words it, but it's so weird, but we'll get to there. But like. Suggestion. Yeah. I That's just I, I like to think of that as a a, a rating reason um, for uh, for for a scene where someone just says <laughs> sex. Sex. <laughs> uh, yeah. well, that's how YouTube judges it. So <laughs> that's a suggestion of sex, not a not, <laughs> not a sex suggestion. <laughs> sex suggestion is what gets you in trouble, and you guys can end up breaking up with your you know high school girlfriend because she, she finds that you kind of dig her other friends. Oh, <laughs> I, but. I'm, you, you know, know what? Twilight. Back scene, to Twilight. Twilight. It's a scene of sensuality. A s- PG-13 oh, for some violence and a scene of sensuality. Well, so I it's... mean, that could have been the that could have been the bag of boiled eggs. We don't even know what <laughs> some people think is sensuous. Listen, whoever the whoever the head of the MPAA was at the time, that could have been a hand on a leg. That could have been that could have been boiled eggs, oh. like Nathan said. That could have been. Uh, we don't know what Jack Valentine's into. 
yeah, he's, he's no showing. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Eric uh, starts hitting on Bella, and then she sees that Edward's back, and she's like, uh, GTG, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and then Edward, like, super awkwardly introduces himself to Bella, and they have a very intense conversation about the rain where Bella says, and I quote, I don't like cold, wet things. <laughs> I've it's, always felt that that was the scene of sensuality. <laughs> it could, it's, it's a good candidate. I, that is Edward. <laughs> That joke, that 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 line would have been considerably funnier if this had been a a, a vampire lesbian relationship. <laughs> <laughs> it almost happened, bro. Wait, how come? Wait, you said there was a gender bent, a bent version of this, right? Everybody's gender bent. Okay, so they so just flipped everyone. Edward, bec- yeah, Edward becomes Edith, and then like everybody changes except for Charlie and Bella's mom. Wait, what, what's Bella's male name? <clears throat> Bo, short for <laughs> Beauford. 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 It should be Buford. Buford. No, it's Pusser. not Buford. Everybody says that, but no, it's Beauford because Bo, because Bella means beautiful and Bo means. <laughs> Nathan, how great would it have been if it was Buford Pusser and Edward? People Buford. pronounce it Buford, but I was like, no, it's definitely Beauford. It's Beauford. <laughs> Joe jo- Tom Baker and Robert Patton's in the romance that could light a thousand <laughs> screens <laughs> and put My you in My soul jail. burns for you. <laughs> <laughs> So she doesn't like cold wet things. I noted that this is at least better than that conversation about sand and Attack of the Clones. Um, <laughs> is it though? It, I think yeah, so. It is. It I don't is. like sand. It's coarse. <laughs> yeah, I think it's yeah. a little bit better. It's not great, but it's a little bit better. Um, Edward, there's a really quick thing here that happens because this all happens at, at around lunchtime. Yeah. Uh, or there, she's having supper with her dad or something. Anyways, there's a ketchup bottle in play. <laughs> and, I, and it looked like Kristen Stewart didn't know how to use that, that kind of ketchup bottle because it looked like she was just shaking it over top and it was a squeeze ketchup bottle. Mm. Oh, was it a squeeze? I thought it, I was pretty sure it was a glass one. Nope. It was the, it was one of those. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It is, yeah, ones. it's one of those red. Yeah. And she's doing it like it's one. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. guys. Because she- it's probably empty. So she was she, like, fr- from that okay. point forward she put it in her rider she's like only plastic okay <laughs> well i'll say that if, if it's the case if the explanation is that she might it, she it might have been empty fine the one problem i had with this movie has now been taken care of i'm sorry it's an excellent film <laughs> um so yeah they, they start they start conversing uh edward and bella edward is like how come you wanted to live with your dad and not live with your mom and blah 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 um very personal questions five minutes into their friendship um she also makes note of his eyes changing color he's like they were black and now they're brown he's like oh it's the fluorescence <laughs> it's like the worst excuse ever and then a real turning point happens because there's all there's a big uh big collision almost in the school parking lot a car nearly squashes bella but edward steps in at the last second and stops it with one hand and makes a big dent in the car Uh uh-oh that's not what humans do it was at this point that i actually noted a couple of things here one stop mumbling please because they don't they don't speak too clearly um and uh two this is going to be a thousand deaths long isn't it two hours Okay, I thousand deaths it. long. Yeah, <laughs> she's almost killed, like you said, by somebody. And then we meet uh, <laughs> Edward's dad, sort of. Mm-hmm. He's the boob grabber from Nurse Jackie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. it's like Peter Facinelli or something. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. He plays Doctor Cullen, which okay. So his whole thing is, uh, how old is that actor? Because he looked like he was maybe ten years older than Robert Pattinson. Yeah, it's they're they're they they've they've acknowledged that the Cullens are supposed to look super young and that they've just like adopted these children like out okay. of the goodness of their heart, even though they're like quite young. Okay, well, yeah, I, yeah. and and so yeah, because when we meet them, she Anna Kendrick explains that they were all adopted, so it's totally cool that they're hooking up, sort of, maybe, kind of, because yeah. they're not technically related. Yeah, I think they not acknowledge okay. that it's still weird, but she's like definitely confirms that they're hooking up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Doctor Cullen is uh, is the is Edward's quote unquote father, and uh, and Edward is trying to play it off like because she's like, uh, dude, you stopped a vehicle with one hand and like crushed part of it. Something's going on. He's like, no, you hit your head. You hit. Oh, you must be so concussed. Oh, Bella, you okay? I oh, was babe. right next to you. Uh. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, listen. Uh, what does he say? Oh, they make a deal. He's cause she's like, uh, hey, tell me how you did that. And he's like, okay, fine. I'll tell you how I did that if you tell me something. And he's like, I had a sudden burst of adrenaline. Okay, now why do you want to go to wh- what's in Jacksonville? Why do you want to go to Jacksonville? And she's like, Floridians. Uh, calling him on his <laughs> bullshit answer. <laughs> um, Mike pops up out of nowhere like an RKO. Got another one in. <laughs> And he, yeah. sweet, yeah, it's good to have him. He's insurance. literally the human equivalent um, of a uh, golden retriever. He's the worst. He is gets it? worse later too. And he's just like, "Hey, Bella, you want to go to prom? Huh? Huh? <laughs> 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 what pals? Ain't we just a- <laughs> <laughs> Which way do we go, Bella? Which way do we go?" Um, the funniest part about this scene is watching the background with Edward just in the background, like sulking, <laughs> standing there, like. <laughs> That killed they don't me. know I'm listening to everything in his head. Yeah. Oh, because later we find out he can read minds. I have so well, many questions. It's actually only a one, it's a one-sided conversation if he's listening to the, that thing because we find out he can't understand uh, what's going on in Bella's head. He can't hear her, not unlike uh, some other much better uh, books and, uh, you know, just media in True Blood. But is... Is it that he can just has really good hearing, or is he listening to their thoughts in this scene? I thought he just had really good no, he hearing. Can, well, he that he would have been listening to the conversation, but he he's also listening to what Mike's thinking. So he knew Mike was going to ask her out. Uh, so he's gotcha. just in the background being like, what's she going to say? Well, I'll tell you what everyone is saying. La push. We all got to go to la push, baby. <laughs> oh baby, la push. La push. You going to la push? I'm going to la push. Jeez. Last time I went to the La Push, I needed a, a shot from the doctor. Anyways, <laughs> I I was say it sounds like a strip club in Quebec. I'm just gonna put that. It's out a there. real place with. I and, don't doubt and, and, that. And, and the tribe is a real tribe that she has never sent a dime to. Oh, Stephanie Meyer. Yeah, I've sent more money to them than she has. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Which is sad. Oh yeah, no, I remember you posting something about that about the actual about the actual tribe of which Taylor Lautner yeah. is a member, right? No, definitely no. not. No, even yeah. even if he even if he uh, we if he could claim any sort of uh, d- more direct native ancestry, it would be of like the you know, the Michigan tribes because he's from the mid he's from Michigan. Everybody's going to the beach. Come, I mean, have fun. Speech. The push. I don't know. Is there something wrong with that beach? It's just a little crowded. So, spoiler alert for future movies: um, the La Pu- uh, the real tribe, werewolves. The real tribe? Are you asking if they're werewolves? <laughs> yeah, IRL. <laughs> are there actual uh, lichen? They, you are, they do. They're. Oh, they, she on basically. Blast. You need to s- now, she say retcon. It. They do actually have a history that no, uh, no, no, links no. back the into real... wolves. No. Yeah, I'm saying that. Yes, the real they're tribe like has a they're history li- they're that leads. They're not okay. Okay, okay. They, they, there is actually like they do have it in their stories, but then she ends up retconning like a huge aspect of their story to like rewrite something for the third book, and that turned into like a really weird exploitative thing because she again has never sent them any money or anything. Like, yes, they've made a lot of like tourism funds from it, but. Still, but still, you're using like, their mythos to make yeah, a million she, bucks. Yeah, like literally their their tribal history, she's reworked. So like there is some like when it started off, it's like yeah, there's some links to like like wolf ancestry, not ancestry, but like wolf stuff uh, that you can actually read about it online. I'll give you guys the links so you can like plug it. them she somewhere. She said it. They are ancestors, literal <laughs> lichens. Oh my god. I was just hoping that werewolves existed. So now <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. bummed. Sorry. <laughs> It's okay. I forgive you. Um, Edward's really mysterious, you guys. He wants to be friends, but if she's smart, she'd stay away from him. Um, but he invi- she invites him to La Push, but Edward does not show up. And uh, that is because, well, we'll find out later. But there are some... There but he says some... it's going to be crowded. Yeah, it's going to be too crowded. So Wait, which, go. There's like 10 people there. <laughs> exactly. That's why it was funny. Oh. It's crowded for that town. <laughs> yeah, It was true. funny. Okay, Amanda, it's funny. <laughs> God damn it. Well, it was supposed to be funny. It was supposed to be funny. Okay. It's fishy swasa. Yeah. It's supposed to be cold. Um, so he doesn't go. 
And uh, we see uh, a, a, another hilarious moment is when Bella is just like hanging out there, kind of bummed out that he's not at La Push. And uh, Jacob and two actual Native American actors show up. And uh, the, the, t- the two other actors are like, <laughs> the Cullens don't come here. <laughs> and then they we just learn, don't. <laughs> yeah, they just don't. And then we learn the whole like backstory, like the ancestry, like you said, about this uh, this tribe that Stephanie Meyer has decided to include in her books and not acknowledge the real people in any way, shape, or form. She could have just made up a tribe. Like honestly, this is a fictional That's what movie. She should have done. She- yeah, I, I don't think it's so much as not acknowledging them. It's just you know not giving them some hey. Mm-hmm. Giving yeah. them some something back. Because uh, and for... on the one note, she was probably like, "Oh, I did like real research here and uh, incorporated something that's uh, like real into my story. It makes it exciting." Except like you're literally appropriating a culture. Yeah. So, like, yeah. But I mean, guys, she's just a, she's just a poor writer. I mean, <laughs> what was she making per book? Like twenty bucks. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'm um, the only buyer. <laughs> I thought it was off-putting when they said uh, in this backstory thing about how the Collins were told to. Uh, Sorry, somebody was told to, that they didn't want to get exposed to, quote, the pale faces. Mm-hmm. That was something. Um, then we cut to uh, some dude we saw earlier for, like, all of 10 seconds. What was What the fuck? Uh, was Waylon, Waylon, who was super on a list. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because he was like, I was Santa, and I had little <laughs> bottles of alcohol. you on my knee. Yeah, I was like, mm, no, that's, no, this you know, is supposed was, to be endearing, and it's not. I think the exchange <laughs> between her dad is something like, you know, she was, she was four. She, you, you probably didn't leave a big impression. And then he was like, oh, I left an impression. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh my this God. guy is on a list. Because, Blue Dot website. That's what he's on. Because yeah. I don't feel bad at all that he dies in this part. Because <laughs> no. These, no. Uh, Other than the fact that he's, he's Bella's dad's friend. Yeah. He, yeah. he's, he gets killed by a bunch of super sexy vampires. Uh, one of which is played by Cam Gigante. Is that his name? Gigantit? Jai. Son of son of El Gigante. Son of El Gigante. Man, that guy, if you watch like any movie from like early two thousands to like two thousand and thirteen, he they put him in everything. They were just like, This guy yeah, is we, gonna take off. We're gonna put him in every genre. Yeah, we just made a joke about not knowing who he is and saying he was the son of a wrestler. <laughs> well, I mean, he was just he's just such like a plain face, dull actor. Like a young mm-hmm. teen guy, and he, they, I just remember, I, I, I've, there was a Nicolas Cage movie that he's in, and there's like another movie that he's in, and it's just like, oh, what can we do with this, this charisma vacuum, <laughs> Cam Gigante? <laughs> Wait, were you guys talking about me? Oh, no, no, Jai, Jai, we weren't talking about you, buddy. No, <laughs> you're the, the, you're dude the in Twilight. You're the OG, Jai. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go get a sandwich from Milos. Do that, buddy. <laughs> Have a good time. <laughs> oh, yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to bring up a sore subject there. Um, I think he just he heard you talking about what you were talking about and assumed it was him. Yeah, he heard dull and listless and charisma vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it. Down. Well, guys, no, I'm gonna go move. No, Jai, just eat your sandwich. Jeez, <laughs> it's time for a shopping spree. Makeover, makeover. But, oh, but not for, but not for Bella. Just for Anna Kendrick and the other girl. Yeah, I was disappointed there was no montage here. Amanda, why wasn't there a montage? Explain yourself. Because Bella's not like the other girls. Oh, she's not like most girls. She's not like most girls. She was just waiting to go to the bookstore, so there's no. Um, <laughs> and then the, there's some pervy dudes that kind of knock on the glass, and you think, okay, oh that's, just, God. that's just an off, that's just an offhand <laughs> joke. Uh, nope, they come back, and there's literally almost a. Uh, close to a rape scene um yeah they all it's a gang of molesters her. yes what's that it's a gang of molesters yes it is it was terrifying i was like whoa yeah. i believe it's i believe the actor is as a gaggle a, a gaggle in the a book it's worse they like heard her they, they oh. like they they fall two of them follow behind her and like cat call in a way to make her drive her in certain directions so that the other ones can loop around and cut her cut her off from the front i'm like well, holy shit I, calculated I, I, I'm glad they uh, they they toned that down a little bit in this PG-13 movie for teens. Gracious, <laughs> yeah. as if as if the book isn't. The book was also in the teen section. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, actually, in, in uh, my kids' local middle school, you have to be in eighth grade to get the Twilight books. I appreciate that. That's probably a good idea. 
There's a, the, my my because that's when they my, start being teens. My Don't youngest, team it up. my youngest, she got that uh, one of them. I think the fifth book or something, and it had that labeled right on it about <laughs> you know old. only only for eighth graders. That's it. You, <laughs> you're on eighth grade. You can't get this book. And when I was watching this movie, oh my god, she was in her glory because she was like, "Oh, you're watching, you're watching." And she didn't even know it was Twilight. She called it Edward. She <laughs> called it Edward. Oh no. <laughs> That's what that's the by the way, that's the adaptation of that Midnight Sun book. It's just gonna be called Edward. <laughs> Edward. <laughs> Edward. And I was I was warned uh not to say anything bad about him at all on this podcast. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll cover it. She doesn't it. listen. I'll cover <laughs> it. <laughs> she doesn't listen. I'm gonna talk so much shit about that glittery bastard. <laughs> But yes, uh, thankfully, uh, everybody was on the edge of their seats just now because we talked about a possible uh, gang rape. But that doesn't happen because Edward shows up and uh, uh, scares them by snarling, I guess. And uh, they go off to have a bite. Uh, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> and she eats literally. You know, I, re- I refrained from making a this is going to suck joke like so long ago i i'm did so you? disappointed in you why do i feel like i heard that I, I i did not i did not once say this was okay. gonna suck and i so okay. wanted to you're confusing i believe amanda you're confusing that with all the other dad jokes i've heard from nathan on this podcast <laughs> fair you're right uh, so what easy. what no what what's he saying she, she by the way they go off to have a bite to eat and she eats literally the worst thing i can imagine mushroom ravioli gross <laughs> yeah just an editorial she's, note. Is she supposed to be? She's supposed to be vegetarian or vegan. Right? No, she's not. I don't think so. Because she so was like. Because even when she was at the diner, she didn't want to have the the dad's heart attack. Yeah, breakfast. she had the guard. Yeah, no, she is not supposed to be vegetarian or vegan. She cooks for him all the time, and it's a variety of meats. <laughs> okay, a variety of meats. I did enjoy the. I enjoy uh, the name of my next band, uh, but I did enjoy the rockabilly waitress at the diner. She was pretty great. Yeah, she was, she was... great. <clears throat> oh yeah, fun fact. Uh, as that scene nope, is ending, it's the... an interesting tidbit. Yeah, it's an interesting okay. tidbit. Okay, sorry, you're right. Interesting tidbit. Um, the person that that uh, waitress, not at this scene, but at the diner scene that was already mentioned, when they're like, "Here's your garden burger, Stephanie." That is actually Stephanie Meyer, and that was her inserting herself into the movie. What? What? It's a real Stephen King move on her part. Do you think yeah, she auditioned? Exactly. Do you think she auditioned for Bella? Um, <laughs> she probably yes, yes, she did. <laughs> no, I still want I still want Edward to be Robert Pattinson if I get the part. Her her first choice for <laughs> Bella was uh, Emily Browning. Okay, because she had that on her website back in the day. Like she had a, her ideal cast list. I don't think anybody actually got cast from it, but I mean that's not terrible. It's not terrible. It actually very much makes sense what, with the description. Wait, was was Edward yeah. gonna be like uh, like Danny DeVito? I can't. Yeah, it was actually. How did you know? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I, I think did it was Henry research. Cavill actually. Henry what? <laughs> but yeah, that didn't. I don't know Superman? if that makes sense. Yeah, but it was before he was Superman. She had a couple of people. There Either was way, a, there was back a time, to the rockabilly. Wait. There was a time before he was Superman. That's why I'm not sure if it was Henry yes. Cavill, but I had to look into it. But I feel like I remember being shocked that that's who it was when I looked it up years later. God, I hope she didn't think it was, you mean Jen, Jim Caviezel. Oh, Caviezel. oh thank <laughs> you. No, not Jim Caviezel. Well, it would, it, would, it would be in line with Stephanie Meyer's uh, <laughs> real life. <laughs> I suppose. So, uh, yeah, Edward is like, check this out. I can read people's minds. And he makes a... Okay, I'm just going to say this. He makes some very vague guesses as to what people are thinking. He's like, this person's thinking sad. This person's thinking hungry. This person's thinking sad. No, it's literally just... It's literally sex, 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 cat. Yes, right, right. It's literally... It's sex the whole time. I would have laughed if you had said cat. And and she said, oh, that's different. He's like, no, no, also sex. No, 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 also sex. Yeah, that's where my mind always goes. I'm like, oh, God. Because it's the way he's looking. He's like, hmm. It's like, oh, God. Because that's the face I make when I just think briefly about my cat. I make. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. You love your cats quite a bit. You don't know Same. anything. Um <laughs> Uh, on their way, but so they leave the restaurant. Uh, yeah, he says he he can't hear her thoughts, and I said, "Oh, so she's literally an empty vessel." Is that what the movie is telling me right now? <laughs> uh, but on their way back, no, they their just, way- just she just uh, took the uh, the the whole Sookie Bill dynamic from the first season of True Blood. <laughs> I haven't seen True Blood ever. <gasps> 
Uh, good show. Okay. Good show. Um, on their way out of the restaurant, they uh, they kind of witnessed some some shit going down at the police station, and that's when we learned that Waylon was the one killed. I didn't even put that together at the time because he was so un- un- his face was kind of unmemorable. But he was Jesus. killed by quote an animal attack. Um, and then uh, Bella's dad is like, "Take this mace. Don't want those animals attacking." Yeah, here's some <laughs> unregistered mace. <laughs> you gotta register your mace, right? Gotta register that mace. Yeah, who's gonna arrest her? The chief of police? Maybe. They should have had that scene, Amanda. <laughs> She's like, listen, I'm your father, and I love you, but you're under arrest. <laughs> you gave me this unregistered mace. <laughs> I'm sorry, it that was, was way test. too... There was way too much, uh, you know, emotion there. You gave me this unregistered mace. <laughs> and then you hear the director saying, perfect, cut. Perfect, cut. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Uh, then Bella starts doing her research and finds out that, hey, wait starts a second. doing her own research. Starts doing her own research. Starts doing her own research. No, don't you dare. I'm just saying, she comes with some wild conclusions. Uh, in a normal universe, people would be like, no, you know what? Uh, that's not a thing. There's no way. And this is the way she should react the idea of high school boyfriend being a vampire no when you're when you're in high school you want everything to be important you're like no my life is actually (laughs) exceptional and i'm just waiting for the moment that it presents itself i will say that at least she didn't get all her research from facebook articles that makes her better than most doing your own research people (laughs) uh but yeah she finds out she's like now wait a second i think edward might be a gosh darn vampire and uh she (laughs) <laughs> she she basically goes with Edward out to like the woods and she's like, How long have you been seventeen? He goes, A while. A while. I love it. I, I love it. My favorite thing in this whole scene is when she's listing she, she's listing all the things, all the things that makes her think he's a vampire, and then he's like, Say it out loud, vampire. I know what you are. Say it. Out loud. Say it. Vampire. Are you afraid? No. And it's like the cameras are like whooshing in all different directions and like panning in and panning out. I'm like, cinema. It was during this scene that I actually noted I had to call myself and said, I didn't rage quit Human Centipede 2. I'm not going to rage quit Twilight. Oh. And I didn't. I didn't. Well, good, because this would be an awkward podcast to record. The uh the, the, the visual effect uh when he takes her running up the mountain. Oh yeah. my god. You mean when she's uh basically like Yoda to his Luke Skywalker? <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yes, if Luke Skywalker was on like, I don't know, a meth sl- meth lab's worth of meth. <laughs> or just a lot of downers. <laughs> well y- you would think a guy with that that uh that that sullen cullen uh would, cullen. would not have that much energy in him, but boy that boy could move. Yeah, he yeah he takes her all over the forest, and then he's like, "Check out what happens to my skin in the sun." And a thousand sparkly vampire jokes are born. Boo! See, I'm so over the sparkly vampire jokes. Like it's been done to death. I'm just like, no, you know, it's it's fair. Like they they made them sparkle too much in that movie for sure. It does look like they just glittered his fucking face, but it's supposed to look like they've actually she in the books changed the way she described it because people kept making fun of it too much. So it's supposed to look more like diamonds like light hitting a diamond versus light hitting like a, a bunch of fucking glitter yeah yeah so as uh, so, so, i mean he, it does have oh, a, she she says that she loves him and he says that he's like the most dangerous predator and he did not look a thing like harvey weinstein <laughs> he also didn't he also didn't look like uh like um uh whalen from earlier so oh, jesus <laughs> <laughs> is this a miramax film no i don't think so no. no, I don't think so. Okay, it's we're safe. Summit, Cinema, Entertainment. Everyone, Sun, we're, Summit Entertainment. We're safe, everyone. We're safe. <laughs> um, I do, I do think, I did laugh out loud 
hard when she, she said, you're beautiful when his skin is sparkling. And he says, beautiful? This is the skin of a killer, Bella. Yeah, I love it. I love it so much. He's like Maybe so Maybe in glad. regards to that, that awesome song by Freddie Mercury. Killer Queen? Exactly. Oh, okay. Oh they should have put that in. <laughs> Edward said, yeah, so Edward's, like, talking about, like, you know, I've killed people before, and I wanted to kill you and take your blood more than anyone else ever, and Bella's basically just like, you seem cool. Um, I don't care. I love you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Edward says, but there, <laughs> his vampire family, his vi- vampire family, we, we're, we're kind of known as vegetarian vampires. We, we do eat meat, but we only kill animals, and, uh, but Bella, you're, like, my own personal brand of heroin. <laughs> yeah, love it. <laughs> We, it was weird that it took that whole Lou Reed Iggy Pop twist for a second, didn't it? <laughs> he just like <laughs> takes Bella's blood, tries to like inject it into his arm. <laughs> I do like that. Uh, to he's knights says, in white satin play <laughs> over a blaring PA. I do like that he says his own personal brand of heroin is just like it just made me think of like no name brand heroin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you save on it, but I mean, really, it's it's a situation where they, if you want the real quality yeah. stuff, you definitely want to go with the Cullen brand of heroin for sure. You notice it. You notice the difference. It, it's it's a family secret. It goes back generations. Well, I mean, our generations, you know, not for <laughs> them because they're vampires and things, you see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cullen heroin sketch. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Um. <laughs> So yeah, he's a uh, the lion fell in love with the lamb. He says, "Sparkles." Oh God! <laughs> we, we also I was I nearly rolled an <laughs> eye out of a socket watching this whole scene. Yeah, so many of those lines are like thrown in there so that you can like put them on merchandise. <laughs> yes, Th- that's the least shocking uh, fact you've told us so far. Yeah, same thing with like all like the Cullen crests. Anything they do for the Quillu tribe, they just make it up so that they can like put it on something. And, like, sell it. Yeah. Just like when Star Wars was putting Star Wars on, like, apples and shit. Remember that? (laughs) Do I really need a Force Awakens orange? Not really. (laughs) But, uh, yeah. The last Jedi kumquat to be okay. (laughs) (laughs) I could go for a uh, Rise of Skywalker uh, plum. (laughs) Delicious. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that happens. Um, Bella repeats everything we just heard essentially in voiceover in case we didn't get it and then we get a hilarious montage of them in school Edward is like I'm breaking all the rules now sunglasses it's my favorite scene I uh, love it's, it. it's my favorite my favorite scene too because it starts <laughs> off with her getting out of his car and some girl going oh my god I and I wanted to be like look at her butt <laughs> it's just so sparkly <laughs> I bet I just, she's like, one of like, those vampires' <laughs> girlfriends. <laughs> I just love that it's like I'm breaking all the rules, and I'm like, the rule of not smiling? Is it like now that you're smiling, is that the big rule you're breaking? Yeah. I like sparkling butts, and I cannot lie. He, he, you other- <laughs> he, lacked the, um, he lacked the 17 muscles required, and now he's, now he's got him, baby. <laughs> now he's got him. <laughs> Uh, he tells his origin, Edward tells his origin story. (laughs) Sorry, I say Eddie because sometimes in my notes I have Ed, I have Eddie, I have Eduardo. (laughs) (laughs) So you have Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Yes, Mm -hmm. all three. Okay. Um, he tells his origin story. So the doctor, Dr. Cullen is, uh, uh, Carlisle, and, uh, he bit him and his own wife to turn them because they were dying of the Spanish flu. There you go, anti-vaxxers. Just let a vampire bite you. No needles. Oh, no, wait. Don't do that because then you'll live forever. Never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. <laughs> I don't think they would sparkle as brightly. Um, <laughs> I'm just worried that they ta- they'd rather get bitten by a vampire than take a fucking vaccine. <laughs> oh, okay. It's safer. I did my research. <laughs> I did my own research. No. Why not both? That- there you go. A drag scene. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Mm? <laughs> There's some Draculas in this movie. <laughs> Meanwhile, guys, Edward and Billy Black have a big stare down. Then old Jacob pops out and uh, at Bella's place because they're but they're just here to check out the flat screen. Mariners, baby. Uh, 
<laughs> I yeah, I don't understand anybody's fascination with baseball in this movie or in general that fucking game. Is anybody baseball is, is the worst, but okay. vampire baseball is the best. Vampire ba- <laughs> If if the if vampire baseball was a sport, I would watch it every night. Same, absolutely. <laughs> every single I'd be every like night. I and if it could only happen during thunderstorms, <laughs> I would pray for thunderstorms every night. Yeah, I'd be like let's go. <laughs> Um, but Bella, it's time to meet the parents, folks. If only uh, Edward's father was played by Robert De Niro, that would have been the icing on the cake. But he's not. <laughs> um, but she admires. He's, she's like, yeah, you have a very nice, light, open house uh, for a vampire. And then they create a moment. They create an awkward moment that didn't have to be an awkward moment because they go there and the vampire family uh, nicely has prepared a meal for Bella because they don't eat, you know, regular food, but she does. So they're being nice about it. And Edward mm-hmm. is all, she's already eaten. Di- oh my God, He's you the guys. worst. Like a petulant child, like the worst. And, and, and then she- like Rosalie has to like break the fake glass, but it clearly wasn't like good fake glass. So that she, they, she still had to be wearing gloves yeah. for no apparent reason. So she could crush the bowl in her hand and not like, injure herself right i, I just, love that touch i just like i swear to god when when bella looks at them after edward says she already ate you just doesn't eat food she almost looks at them and is like why the fuck did you say that dude i could have exactly. just ate some food and you know i could have ate some or and done a take-home dish i mean yeah yeah really. just be like i'm a little nervous meeting new people i have a little bit of food you can always add a little bit more to the tank you know you're good I'm I'm a firm believer that if you don't have to make a situation uncomfortable, you don't do it. Don't make yeah exactly. Fuck you, Edward. Yeah, fuck you, dude. I should, I should, I should start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I do like his wall of graduation caps from all the times yes. he's graduated. That, that was an interesting piece of art. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> he said, I would I buy love, a replica. I, I love how he says. I love how he points to and he's like inside joke. Like, it takes two seconds to get it once you know they're vampires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they've all graduated from high school a bunch of times. Um, he's got a great music collection. He's such an old soul. Oh, right. Oh, for fuck's sake. And then we have a great moment where, like, in any other movie, they would, like, you know, be talking about a modern pop hit or something. But Kristen Stewart is like, Claire de Lune. Claire de Lune is great. Right. I would have loved if, if she was talking about how he was such an old soul and she pulled out, like, Weird Al Yankovic's off the deep end. Yeah. I actually have a fun fact. Oh, I, or sorry, an uh, interesting, an interesting, tidbit, interesting tidbit. tidbit. I have an interesting tidbit. So in the book, Bella gets this CD from Phil and she listens to it at night a bunch to like drown out like the fact that she can't sleep because she can't stop thinking about Edward. We never find out what the band is until Midnight Sun when Edward's like, wow, I wouldn't have pegged her for listening to this. It is Hybrid Theory by Linkin Park. <laughs> A true classic. <laughs> okay, okay. Cause it's, yeah, because it's like, yeah, I never would have pegged her for like liking something so screamy or something, and then it like it ends up being fucking like the, the most wait, mainstream screamy band that has ever existed. Is the the album the album is called <laughs> Hybrid Theory? Yeah, it's the it's yes. Linkin Park's first album. Does it contain the song in the end? Yes, it does. Okay, that's that's like one of the three Linkin Park songs that I know. <laughs> wow. But yeah, it's that whole album. It doesn't even <laughs> <thought> matter. <laughs> yeah, it's great. More than I know about Linkin Park. So they're dancing. Uh, they start dancing to music that is non-diegetic. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, <laughs> Edward, Edward uh, takes Bella on another uh, Yoda, Luke Skywalker adventure through the woods, and she's like, "I'm not afraid of you." It flies out the window with her. Yeah, yeah, because she says, "I'm not afraid of you." Better hold on tight, Spider Monkey. <laughs> spider Monkey. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I not love, in the book. Not I, in the book. I love the bits, by the way, where you can. <coughs> I mean, it's not it's not often, but there's like a few little moments where you can hear his accent peeking out a little bit, <laughs> and it's fun. It's like oh oh oh, <laughs> uh, you're uh, it. <laughs> He's much better at it now, I think. But at the time, yeah. Oh yeah. Um. So yeah, there's better be for that Batman movie. <laughs> oh, I think that Batman movie is gonna be <laughs> sick. I'm excited. Oh, I'm so excited. That trailer looked really good. Uh, but, but, but it can't be Batman. He sparkles. Blah. <laughs> He's a good actor. He doesn't make all great choices. Yeah. Name me an actor that's only been in great movies. I'll wait. <laughs> oh, Christopher Walken. Uh, Nathan, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for a fact, <laughs> the early onset of our podcast, that that is not true. <laughs> 
and I'll give you <laughs> nine reasons why not. <laughs> Has Timothy Chalamet ever been in a bad movie? Little Women. Oh, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Don't hurt me. <laughs> That's He's young. Give him time. You know that that's what I like, mean. Like that sounded like a Timothy Chalamet laugh right there. That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he has. Was he in like a Turtles movie or something? <laughs> I'm assuming he's been in something. I don't know his whole discography. I was just thinking. His discography? Discography, his filmography. I don't know his full filmography. I'm not a fan yeah. of him as an actor. I like his al- I like his albums. <laughs> I'm really more into his depressing music, personally. <laughs> It'd be great if his music career, though, was actually, like, really upbeat. Like, he's, <laughs> he's saying, like... I'm so happy. Hey, <laughs> nothing's going to bring me down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, I love Timothy Chalamet's cover of Walking on Sunshine. <laughs> oh anyway shining so. happy people Very holding hands shining happy people. okay twilight <laughs> where are we at um oh yeah so they're dancing they're climbing around they're jumping around i laughed for a solid minute when this montage ended with them playing piano together that was hilarious <laughs> interesting tidbit he wrote that song Robert Pattinson? Robert Pat yeah, Robert Pattinson wrote Bella's Lullaby. Oh, okay. So he's actually legit pretty good at piano. Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Points. Interesting tidbit. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Talk like a lunatic like you were before. What? <clears throat> oh, fun facts. Saying, like, yeah. Fun facts. Right, good that's, lord. That's, 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 that's the first sign of syphilis, I think. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Shit. I'll have to I'll have to call Stephen Izzy and let them know. <laughs> um so mike shows back up and uh he says you and you and cullen huh i don't like it I'm like that's too bad for <laughs> you pal <laughs> i'm um, gonna date him even harder now yeah well exactly fuck off mike uh <laughs> Bell- is it this point where Bella at that one point describes what somebody as he's a good buddy which I've never ever heard a single girl yeah. ever say in my entire life. <laughs> she says that about yeah. When her dad's like, "I see that Mo- Newton kid's got moon eyes for you," and he's like, "Yeah, he's a good buddy." <laughs> yeah, she tried to she tried to um, use friend dialogue as much as possible to tell her dad this is that's not a thing, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, they're both, uh, they're kind of um, almost Bella's going to discuss boys with her dad. And then she's like, I don't think I want to talk about boys with you. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> TTYL. Oh yeah. And that, but then mom wants to talk about nothing but boys when she mm-hmm. talks to her so much. I'm like, slow you your safe? roll mom. Yeah. <laughs> Are you using protection? Are you blowing him? Yet? <laughs> I'm like, whoa, mom. <laughs> um, but, but that's okay guys, because thankfully she gets out of that awkward conversation when Edward materializes in her fucking room. And not the first time in the movie. No, he's yeah, enjoyed watching her sleep. Time. It's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, is he jerking it in her room? <laughs> I have another interesting tidbit. Was he jerking it in real life? <laughs> no. Oh. Um, the way that he gets into her room, he actually has to use like some like fucking WD-40 on the window so it doesn't creak when he opens the window to sneak up on her. Like to not sneak up, but to like spy on her at night. Oh. There was planning there. He was like, oh, shit, that's an old window. I'm going to have to oil that before I watch her sleep. Good Lord. Jeez, I thought he just turned into a bass. <laughs> just turned into a pervert. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, can the vampires in, the, in these movies turn into bats? Is that a thing? No. Oh. No. Okay. Not as cool as that, that's for sure. Ah. <sighs> Uh, okay. So yeah, he's talking about how he likes watching her sleep and she's like, "Hmm, okay. Uh, he says, I want to try something that I've never, ever done. And then I thought the joke was going to be like, they're getting close to kiss and then it was going to be something else, but no, it's kissing. He's never kissed anyone. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the scene of sensuality. Oh yeah. That makes sense because he stops himself. And he launches himself back. Yeah. And he's like, I don't want to hurt you. I'm like, dude. And then she's just sitting there in her underwear and I was like, risque. (laughs) The next morning, though, dad's dad's been drinking, I think, and he's like loading his gun, <laughs> and, and Bella he's is like cleaning, cleaning his shotgun. <laughs> he's cleaning yeah, his shotgun. It's a nice little, br- his nice little break action double barrel. Yeah, I got, cool I got, I got to ask Nathan because in this scene, um, she asks him if he wants to meet Edward, and he cocks the shotgun, and I said, "Is this Nathan? Is this the Nathan's uh, life?" <laughs> no, no, no. I I don't need to. I I already have a. I just have a deer head that they see when they come in the room. So the first <laughs> oh, thing they see when they come in the door. I just, I, I just, I just say, you know what? You see that deer head, son? You see that deer head? Yeah, there's a beautiful, majestical creature of nature. 
absolute poetry incarnate. I didn't know it, and it never did a single thing to me. And I shot and killed it. What do you Jesus. think I'm going to do if you hurt my daughter? <laughs> okay, so no shotgun cocking. That's fine. I don't need it. <laughs> don't need it. Don't, don't need, need it. it. Also, when the way he flipped it shut, it's not loaded because he was cleaning it. Okay. I think he just did that for the yeah. intimidation factor. Oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's like, all right. Yeah, Bring let's meet him. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, so, so, and he's also been drinking, which is why I was like, uh, <laughs> it's like the middle of the day. Yeah, it's the middle it really of the day. Is. It's fine. Have you ever, have you ever been to Washington? Uh, yeah, just, just in early January though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, not this one. <laughs> no, not that Washington, the state of Washington. <laughs> no, I did go to the state of Washington cause I read the instructions wrong. Uh, <laughs> From <laughs> so you're just like hanging out in Snohomish County on January on January sixth. Guys, I'm getting ready to storm. Where is everyone? <laughs> Why is there a Starbucks on every corner? <laughs> but no, guys, it's time for Vampire Baseball. Calm as you see him, Bella. Okay. <laughs> Now I see why you need the thunder. That's got to be a home run, right? Ed was very fast. Uh, the best scene ever. The best. So okay. Scene so I, I I said I had a story in regards to this before you guys yes. get into your breakdown. You about have it. played vampire baseball. <laughs> I have not. Oh, I wish. Sort of maybe. Um, when this movie first came out. <laughs> on DVD, uh, Patty and I watched it because we wanted to see what all the you know all the fuss was about, and uh, we watched it from beginning to end. Didn't much care for it. Never saw any of the sequels. You flash forward a few months later, uh, we're starting to watch True Blood, and uh, I put the first episode on for her, and she watched it, and she noticed the beats about you know the the human girl and the vampire falling in love him not being able to read her mind she said to me didn't we watch this like a few months ago and they were like all went out and played baseball in the sparkly i'm like no sweetheart that was uh that was <laughs> that was twilight this is true blood this is this is good <laughs> Yeah, because they uh, they premiered the same year, so they would have been in like production and development at like the exact same time. Sorry, but yeah. I can understand why your brain would be like, "Yeah, didn't they like? Wasn't they like some like Mississippi baseball like?" <laughs> <clears throat> so they can all they they really love baseball. It's America's pastime, and they can only play it during a thunderstorm because they're so goddamn strong. They're so gosh darn loud, crack. you know, just a crack. Yeah, and we get yeah. a real tasty guitar lick. During this whole thing, yeah, Supermassive Black Hole by Muse, a classic that I just now refer to as the Vampire Baseball song. That's uh, all it can be. I mean, once you exactly. once you once you your music has been scored to <laughs> Vampire Baseball, like what other kind of identity can you have? So uh, the Vampire Baseball is great, and they jump in the air in slow motion and bounce into each other a bunch of times, and it's awesome and fantastic, and it's great. Uh, then. The sexy vampires show up. The other sexy vampires show up. The, oh, the villains. Lenny Kravitz, not Christian, and Ellie Kemper? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I mean, Cam Gigant uh, Gigante, right? El Gigante's son, as we said. El Gigante's son, yeah. Um, they want to play baseball, too. Totally. There's no tension here at all. But then <laughs> Cam Gigante hilariously takes this big dramatic sniff of the air, and he's like, you brought a snack. And now he's out for Bella's blood. We have a conflict, a major conflict, and a villain 95 minutes into this movie. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we get we get a bunch of intense staring. Uh, Edward Edward quickly whisks Bella away, and he's like, "We need to we need to get this vampire. We need to rip him apart and murder him." And I'm like, "Whoa!" We need to, and we need to get you out of town. And I'm like, we have taken a fucking step up <laughs> to the streets in this part. Like this, this, mm -hmm. this, this made a this made a big turn at this moment. Yeah. Uh, but Bella wants to go with her dad, and Edward's like, "That's a bad idea," because I think your dad would not be able to fight a vampire. 
Um, so what you should do is you should bitch him out and see use exact verbiage that your mom used when she left him. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair. To be fair. You know, she does mm-hmm. do it in a way where he won't come looking for her, and she has to be as like mean as possible. So like, do you know what the she best, can actually leave? The best option would have been that literally would have been like, "Hey, Dad, had a great night. I'm gonna go have a sleepover at Angela's house or Jessica's house." Yeah. Bye. I'm going to Anna Kendrick's. We're gonna we're gonna do karaoke. Yeah, we're gonna do karaoke, hot girl yeah, shit. Karaoke with Anna Kendrick. That'd but yeah, it had to be dramatic. It had to be dramatic. It had to be like, what would be a reason why she'd be gone for like potentially days at a time? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. like, obviously, eventually someone was gonna be like, okay, she never made it to Florida. Like, Dad, I'm gonna go on a <laughs> on a on a alcohol binge for a few days. I'll be back. Don't come looking for me. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> But no, she goes off and uh, Edward takes her out of town. Um, then, okay, I didn't super understand that. So Rosalie, by the way, she mentioned Rosalie is super jealous about Bella all the time because I think she also likes Edward, which is weird because he's kind of No, her she does not. Oh. She does not. Okay. Rosalie is jealous for a couple of reasons. For one, her and Jasper are kind of like the protectors of the family. It's their job to like be very, cons- they, they see it as if their secret's going to get exposed, they want to fucking leave. Um, and Rosalie was technically turned to be Edward's mate but they didn't like each other but then she's still kind of like it's normal for me not to like him but it's weird that he doesn't like me but his her issue with bella is that for one bella runs the risk of like exposing their family and two she wishes she was still a human so she's like upset that bella's like giving it away or wants to give it away okay so yeah there's reasons why she's a bitch uh but yeah and then thank you because i had no idea i had no idea what was going on yeah you're yeah there you go I'll, I also yeah. might need you to explain yeah. this next part because um, the character Kay. Alice, who, again, I think I'm Love only Alice. mentioning for the first time now, but she has some, like, what's her power thing? Because she's, like, drawing or something, and she's like, oh, he's at the she, ballet studio. She can see the future, but if people change their decisions, it changes the future. So she can, the drawing is just, like, an added thing that she can, like, draw what's in her mind. So she can just kind of, like, sketch out so other people can see what it is. The drawing never, ever happens again in the series i don't think <laughs> so it's just this, this but, one scene yeah so so she can see like if i was gonna decide to go somewhere and get like a certain dress she could be like that's a bad dress call a different one but if i was like planning to if i was gonna like she so if, I, if at the last second if i was gonna go somewhere and buy like a dress but then the last second i decided oh i'm gonna go to starbucks first it would change as i made that decision so so that's why that's why when she's like oh god no the future changed because he's now realized that I, he was being sent on some wild fucking goose chase yeah because so they try to they try to throw him off plans. with like her scent and shit wasn't it uh, great when they yeah, told exactly. her to mark the tree <laughs> she just rubbed yeah. up against it yeah <laughs> yeah she's <laughs> i was hoping she was gonna be like a cat and just put like her ass on it <laughs> <laughs> or just like or just like spray it <laughs> Well, no, it had to smell yeah, like it Bella, be not her. It wouldn't be Bella's scent, It wouldn't be her. Oh, I guess not. It would be Rosalie's. <laughs> Dumbass. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Come, um, calm down there, Gerard Butler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, they're... Uh, but then Bella gets a, a call, and it's, it's seemingly her mom, but no, it's actually Cam Gigantic, and he's like... Yeah, I've got your uh, I've got your mom totally hostage because I found your high school records and boy oh boy they're really willing to give away your personal information, <laughs> so you better come meet with me. So she's like, okie doke. Um, but then she shows up to the ballet school and what? He was just playing home video footage of her mom and her mom's not really there. How? What? That, that was so ridiculous. <laughs> like, what did you? How did you know yeah. to cue it up perfectly like that? Like that was that was some. I mean, maybe it's because we learned he's essentially a, a cinematographer at this point because uh, Cam, Cam. Yeah, he's making a movie. Yeah, Cam Gigetti is a fucking yeah. uh, camcorder. He's like he's and the way he's holding that camera and moving around, it's like he thinks he's Michael Bay. Yeah. 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 Just that. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. So he That's tosses me. her around for a bit um, until 
Edward shows up, but he sees that he also sees that Bella's hands bleeding, and it's like I can imagine it's like when a young kid sees boobs for the first time. That was like the reaction I got from Edward. When he oh, saw and that her bleeding. her leg too. Yeah, her leg too, because like he her legs like, ripped open. I want to go to there. Is basically what I, I want to go to there. <laughs> uh, Bella is bitten by Cam Gigante. And uh, is seemingly turning into a vampire, but it more looked like she just borrowed some of Jim Morrison's stash. Looks like she's just having like a bad trip. <laughs> yeah, just the screaming. Yeah. Um, they what do they do? <laughs> so okay, <laughs> it's like this tender moment going on in the foreground, while in the background they are like burning Cam alive. <laughs> yeah, yes. like Alice like rips off his head and they like throw him in a pyre. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I just love that. But then you get the like, then you get the Robert Pattinson song, song where he's all like, oh my, my way, you know? <laughs> just love it's how great. that's happening while like <laughs> that horrific stuff is happening in the background. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, so they burn him, they burn him alive. Edward <laughs> uh, sucks the venom, quote unquote, out, which yeah. I didn't think that was a vampire thing. That well, yeah, they can just, yeah, it's because it didn't spread yet, so he could just suck. If they had left it alone longer, it, he, he, she would have died. I didn't think they have venom, though. I thought it's just like if they... No, that's what blood. they do. No, it's venom. No, no. Wait. Well, these vampires, it's venom. The thing that turns them into vampires <laughs> is the vampire venom. Stephanie Meyer's oh. version of vampires. And it would work so... There's a lot of vampires that have venom, actually. Listen, guys, if a vampire had venom, it would be perfect because they could because he could still say, Eddie! <laughs> Eddie, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Stop. No, <laughs> but it's true. So, yeah, so Bella's fine. She's in the hospital. Uh, Edward is sitting there pretending to be asleep. <laughs> um, uh, her mom comes in and is, like, freaking out. And then, you know, Edward is all, this is bad. You shouldn't be with me. And she's like, no, no, don't say that. No, don't say that. Don't ever say that again. No, okay, no, that's no, the no, end no, of that. No. Can you imagine going through all of that, though? Because, like, you cared about someone so much, and they're like, I'm just going to leave you alone forever now. You're always going to be like, no, no. <laughs> you mean I went through all that? And, and I don't even get that dick? Yeah. And now you're going to, quote, unquote, <laughs> protect cold, me? wet thing that I clearly <laughs> yeah, expressed, I don't get that cold, wet thing. expressed interest in not liking? <laughs> she needs yeah, exactly. that cold, wet <laughs> dick. I that. I boarded that word. <laughs> exactly. That's what she's waiting for. Uh, Four books it takes. But she gets out of there. It's prom night. Edward is. Uh, we find out, out that the poor Asian kid has the DJ his own prom. Yeah. Well, he picked the theme. You make Technically, your own they're not. It's their own prom would be the year after. They're just juniors right now. It's fine. So it's their junior prom. Yeah, it's okay. their junior prom. See, there you go, Nathan. It's perfectly fine. I still feel that junior <laughs> prom is the thing that's put on by the hey, school, it's, and it's weird. At least this kid had to DJ his own junior prom. Well, you prom. see. Child labor. You see, it's better because in the books, uh, Eric doesn't get a girlfriend at all. They blend Eric with another character for the movie. So at least he gets someone and isn't alone like he deserves to be. So, uh, yeah, Edward takes Bella to the prom not before her dad gives her a brand new registered pepper spray. I'm assuming. <laughs> uh, Jacob then gets his creep on and swoops in and is like, hey, you should break up with him. My dad paid me to come talk to you. 20 bucks. <laughs> Let's hear it. Just don't get mad, okay? He wants you to break up with your boyfriend. It's just, he said, uh, quote, we'll be watching you. <laughs> okay, well tell him thanks. Okay. And to pay up. <laughs> okay. And I'm sorry, listen, he's probably uh, a nice guy. He's probably he's probably genuinely good dude. I don't know, maybe he's not, but he seems like he is. He is one of the worst actors I've ever seen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jacob? Taylor Lautner. Taylor. Oh, Taylor Lautner. Taylor Lautner? Yeah, he gets uh, the next movie. Just wait till you get to where the hell you been at, loca. <laughs> so... Terrible prom dancing, of course. Uh, the night ends mm -hmm. with Bella and Edward being in like a gazebo type dealio, and uh, mm -hmm. and how convenient, by the way, that as soon as they show up, everyone else leaves. Yeah, a new song starts, and everybody just like promptly decides, you know what? Did you hear the they song? They clearly that need a moment. That's pro that would have tanked just about anything <laughs> I'd have went to. Uh, oh wait, I do remember. Isn't it the I found you? It's I was song. A I know exactly what song plays. Wet in the prom boy diving. Too deep for coins. 
all of your straight light eyes wide on my plastic toys. Then when the cops yeah. closed the fair, I <laughs> cut my long baby hair, stole me a dog-eared map, and called for you everywhere. Sam, I am. I will try. I will try green eggs and ham. I feel like I feel weird like part lyrics, of that. But I feel like part of that was solid made up. song. The, the, the lyrics Only. were ridiculous. On a Susie yeah. They are. They were, yeah, they are. They are very ridiculous lyrics. But, but yes, this is the this is the bit where Bella is like, you know what? I just want to be a vampire. Can you just make me a vampire? And he's like, <gasps> Whoa, hold on. We've got a few more movies yet. <laughs> you get frustrated, but like when I was a teenager, I would have been like, Yes, I also want to be a vampire because when you're a teenager, you want to be something cool. Yeah. It's like when you read Harry Potter, you're like, I wish I was a fucking wizard. Like, I wish I was a supernatural creature. Yeah, when I read Harry Potter, I wish I was a Jedi. When I I read Harry Potter, it's like, I wish I was a Dobby. Wait, no, I don't. (laughs) All my constant viewings of the Nightmare on Elm Street series says about me. I want to be a dream murderer. (laughs) (laughs) At least it was the... At least it was the original films, and it wasn't the remake that made you want to be like. Mm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's very true. <laughs> well, but apparently story. that was how it was originally supposed to be, but Wes Craven toned it down to sell it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know that going back to that was a great idea with the remake, but anyway, that certainly makes actor. you hate him, and you don't want to see him become some sort of irreverent pop culture icon. That poor actor was typecast though, because he did another movie where he also played a pedophile. Yeah, Jack Errol Haley's, uh, he's done some really good But then he also played a movie work, where he killed but pedophiles. He, yeah. Yeah. He's done some really good stuff, but he's had, he's had some really questionable character type castings labeled upon him, though. Mm. Speaking of not pedophiles, um, they're, they finish their dance, and, uh, you know, she's all like, she's basically like, okay, no vampire for now, but later mm-hmm. on, you better bite me. Um, Rosalie is upset. Credits. <laughs> no, that wasn't Rosalie. Was it? Who was that? It was that's Victoria. Victoria. Oh, okay, that's that makes the, more sense. Jesus Christ, dude! You're. Like, I had, I had, I had blonde redhead, blonde. I had uh, white people face blindness. <laughs> that Apparently. Point. I don't know. I they neither character really <laughs> left a mark. I guess I just thought it was Rosalie. But anyway, <laughs> the end credits. The music is mm-hmm. hilarious. The montage is hilarious, but not as. Not as good as the best end credit sequence of all time in these movies, which we'll talk about one day. Which is Breaking Dawn. Yeah. Oh, God, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, uh, that, that's fucking Twilight. So we'll go, Twilight. we'll go around the horn. We'll find out everyone's ratings. I feel like I have an idea of where my, my co-host and our guest is going to be. <laughs> um, but Amanda, we'll start with you. Uh, was this movie worth a watch? A drunk watch with friends. Would you commit head trauma to forget it or avoid like the plague? Uh, it depends what you're looking for. I would at least say this is worth watching drunk with friends. Um, I also think that if you were like a teenager when, like I was, I was like 14 when the first book came out and I read it when it came out. Like I was, by the time it got to the last couple of books, I was like, these books are fucking trash, but I'll always have the first ones. And now I just think they're all hilarious. Like the Breaking Dawn movies are ridiculous and hilarious. There are body horror scenes. I was like, how did we get from... You can barely have someone kissing for two seconds to like sex scenes and body horror. I love it. It's hilarious. So I would at least give it a worth a watch drunk with friends. Okay. So drunk watch. <clears throat> All right, Nathan. Same. I watch it stone cold sober though. <laughs> I did. Um, Nathan, <laughs> He's same not question. Really that sober. I mean, he drinks I'm, a I'm, lot. I'm always not, I'm always a little not sober. Uh, <laughs> I mean, no, I, do- I mean stone cold. Oh, oh, okay. I was, I thought you were accusing me of micro dosing my alcohol. No, no, no. <laughs> Nathan, what, same question. What do you think? Well, I'm gonna go with the uh, I'm gonna go with the head trauma on this one, uh, if you please. Uh, not not full on avoid like the plague because like there are some bits in it that are that are, are kind of fun and funny and uh, the actors in this have have done things that and so I mean it's not terrible. You know for sure that it's a director's choice, not an actor's choice most of the time in this movie. Um, yeah, so if, if I could, you know, bludgeon my cranium, uh, so that I'd forget ever seeing it, I'd be, I'd be pretty happy. Is it so that you could get the pleasure of watching it again without any knowledge? No. Yeah, it is. No, no, no. (laughs) 
Um, I will also. No, I'm not. Sorry, I shouldn't say I'll also. I will. Uh, I will give it the drunk watch rating for sure. Um, I, uh, I I laughed a lot <laughs> watching this movie. Mm-hmm. It's funny. And again, I mean, it, there's there's intentional and there's unintentional funny. I think in this movie. And, mm-hmm. and again, absolutely. I don't think it like it's not. It's not a girl. It's not a, a genuinely well-made movie for the most part. No, but. It's not, it doesn't, I don't think it quite deserves the vitriol it got when it came out. And I think part of that was kind of based on something else. But I, I, again, I'm not trying to say this is a hidden masterpiece. It's not. Um, but it's I not. just don't think it's like the worst movie ever. Um, oh, so, yeah. no, no. Yeah, I actually think that you will probably find the third movie to be the worst movie. Ooh, excellent. Because it is like not as funny it's not as interesting it doesn't go over the top into ridiculous and it's yeah i I just i don't know actually a lot of people hate new moon but i I like new moon challenge accepted (laughs) (laughs) oh i thought you were gonna say okay okay there we go (laughs) (laughs) new moon river nope no it's a different song different song altogether (laughs) i know so there you go that's twilight we all have um slightly different opinions uh but we are going to uh take a brief break uh hear from some sponsors and we will be right back what were they thinking four pillar sports a podcast for sports fans made by sports fans join chris and randy every week as they dive deep into football basketball baseball and professional wrestling Catch for Pillar Sports on all major platforms. And remember, keep on talking sports. The great visionary leader of India, Mahatma Gandhi, said, It is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. Listen to the Healthy Grocer radio show on your favorite podcast platform. We know that health is our greatest wealth and we will be discussing all aspects of natural healing. Explore everything from supplements, superfoods, and healthy lifestyle choices to help conquer stress and boost productivity. Top industry experts and natural health professionals join us for a deep dive into our healing journey. You can find the Healthy Grocer Radio Show on demand every day, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And remember, health is your greatest wealth. We are back. Dinosaurs? Damn. The story about them. (laughs) Etc. It is now time on the podcast for the low haiku. Nathan, would you like to explain to the folks what a low what a low haiku is, I guess. It's it's a term that we've coined. It's a low haiku is seventeen perfect syllables to describe a movie you've just been talking about for well over an hour. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, Amanda, as our as our guest, um, uh, would you like to uh, read your uh, haiku? Yes, I will uh, read my low haiku, which is a little bit more for the fans of the series as a whole and less about this movie exclusively because it all turns into an amorphous blob in my head. So, <clears throat> so, so the people that are, are only angry at Nathan and I right now is what you're saying. Probably. Yes. Okay. Actually, I think I think you're probably in the clear, Brendan. You <laughs> fell into the line of modern memes. You're fine. Nathan, on the other hand, though, Ooh. they're coming for your throat. Never. <laughs> <clears throat> Hashtag watch out. <laughs> Ig- ignore Edward and Jacob. They both fucking suck. Alice is Bella's true love. Very good. Very very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, Nathan. Uh, you have a haiku for us? Yes. <clears throat> it's a slighter, slightly hotter take, uh, dis- although that, that take was pretty hot when you get right down to it. Mm-hmm. Sparkled out the ass. Kristen is a Valium vampire. It sure ain't true blood. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Why did I like this? There's legit bad dialogue, 
Mm, vampire baseball. And uh, that's the that's that's the haikus. And uh, we're out. We are. And we are the next up. The next segment. <laughs> That's how we do it. Um, we, uh, Check we, this off the list. <laughs> we t- like, let me take out my Excel spreadsheet and just delete that row. There we go. <laughs> um, we, of course, talked about this movie. We had uh, differing opinions, but uh, Nathan, what do we always say? Well, we always say... Don't take a word for us! That's right. Don't take our word for it. Nathan, I feel like this is a divisive uh, Rotten Tomatoes entry. You know what? E- slightly. Not okay. as drastic as I figured, uh, given that uh, you know I could see critics deriding a lot of this stuff. But the critics gave it a 49. Okay, so about half the critics were like, I can jive to this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then as far as the audience goes... Uh, a lot of teens and soccer moms went to the movies that summer because it and, and enjoyed it because the seventy three with the and and audience. and Amanda a lot of fake accounts created by Amanda the Jedi. Possibly. Actually, no. You know what the best part is is that I can actually give this a critic approved five star rating. Do it. Okay. I have to actually make the. I, I yeah. I'm going to. <laughs> I can. I can do every single. I can give every single Twilight movie a critic approved. Well, if we like, rating. if we liked this, we might also <laughs> like New Moon. Uh, I don't get the connection at all. Right, uh, the professional. Uh, what? I mean, think you mean the proposal? Oh, sorry, no, sorry, the proposal. <laughs> My bad. I'll do that again. If you like Twilight, you might like Leon the professional. <laughs> that would be. Crazy. <laughs> well, well, the proposal. <laughs> Nine, uh, the remake, uh, Mamma Mia, and Julie and Julia. All right. Well, let's dive in. Let's get into these critics. Uh, let's see. Laramie Legel says, uh, he's, he's Lord very of the Rings a- character? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Laramie Legolas says, uh, from film.com, let's own that domain. He must be rich. Uh, he says, my hope is that the sequels are actual attempts at movies. The world doesn't need any more toothless cinema. Ooh. Okay. Uh, well, my my first critic one comes from Anne Cohen of Refinery29. Now, she must be part of this uh, Twilight Renaissance uh, that Amanda talked about. Oh, no, about. The, Renaissance, the Renaissance had not started in 2018 yet. She was an outlier. She was early. Oh, okay. So she, she was ahead of... Ahead of the curve, eh? Uh, she yeah, wrote that 10 years after its release, Twilight stands as a powerful, darkly stylish depiction of teen female desire. Yeah, it absolutely does. Is okay. that wrong? Yes, but it does. Um, I've got one um, from Manola Dargis from the New York Times. A deeply sincere, outright goofy vampire romance for the hot, not-to-trot abstinence set. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of like this one from uh, Sukdev Sandhu of the Daily Telegraph from the UK. I watched Twilight in a cinema full of young girls who, when they weren't texting friends and guzzling soft drinks, giggled, sighed, and exhaled with a passion that was not only endearing, but a measure of its emotional truth. As a positive review. It's okay, I'm assuming it must go on because it sounded pretty negative. Uh, uh, no, I think he was saying that it was endearing, though. Okay. Mm-hmm. Steve Newton uh, from the Georgia Strait wrote... Mike unless Newton's you're a four- uh, father, the character from the movie. Okay. <laughs> writes, unless you're a 14-year-old girl who gets all giddy at the thought of cute boys and first love, steer clear of 13 director Catherine Hardwick's anemic adaptation. <laughs> one out of five damn jesus damn steve, steve did not care for that 
He did not. Uh, I got a positive one from Nigel Andrews from the Financial Times. Not sure why they wanted a <laughs> okay. Twilight review back in 2008. They were doing the box office from, numbers and they got caught up in it. Yeah. Back in 2008. This is sexual gothic tripe of high order. I am looking forward to the second installment. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, okay. My last critics review uh we'll do our last our last critics reviews here um this is from uh richard propes and he simply says it's critic proof so, yeah i love that one it's true okay uh I mean, well that, i mean like no matter what they say it's gonna make 700 million dollars yeah exactly Fair. so yeah uh my last one uh comes from someone who is sounds like the weather girl from a local news station sunny bunch from the Washington Times, he writes, It's hard not to get sucked in if one can get past the sometimes hokey, melodramatic teenage dialogue. 2.5 2. out of 4. I'll give my last one, which is a positive one. And even though it's pos- positive, I even feel like it goes too far okay. uh, as the resident Twilight fan wow. on this podcast. Uh, so Jeff Berkshire of Metromics.com. Twilight does that thing all great love stories do. Mm. It speaks to the heart. Mm. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, great. No, it, it, it literally plays to like wish fulfillment. It does not play to the heart. It ta- it's fantasy fulfillment. G- great, great. Lo- I want to be <laughs> special and important. Make me a vampire. <laughs> great love story, huh? <laughs> That's, that, those the are, greatest. Those are words that he put together in a sentence. <laughs> um. All right, well, let's get into the uh, the real cream of the crap here, the audience reviews. These are sure to be insane and wonderful. I just want to start off by reading Kara I's review, who simply says, was it just me or was there a lot of staring? Like, a lot of staring. One and a half stars. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> well, my, my first one comes from Sam E. I can only assume it's Sam Elliott. Good voice. Uh, and he, he writes, I really enjoyed this movie. A lot more than I thought I would. Before watching, I was under the impression that Bella was weak and the movies are dumb. Don't get me wrong, (laughs) Bella is certainly not the definition of a strong in this book. And she made choices I never would have recommended anyone to make. (laughs) Fortunately for her, she got lucky. When you go into this movie, don't go into it looking for logic. Go into it looking for characters to make smart decisions or expecting... No cheesiness. Or expecting this to make any sense. Go into this movie purely for entertainment purposes. And maybe, just maybe, you might be able to enjoy this movie. Four of stars. Hell yeah. (gasps) Oh, why wasn't Sam Elliott the narrator in this movie? (laughs) Oh, I love that. Oh Oh my god. Um, You know, I never thought about dying in (laughs) somebody else's place. (laughs) Space. He was so goddamn pretty. <laughs> I said, they're not actually related. <laughs> Your skin is beautiful. <laughs> this is the skin of a killer, Bella. You're now like, I've just gone you're like a redneck. diamond, a diamond in the rough. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Right. <clears throat> so I've got a five-star review from Math M. Mm. I'm in love with Edward. Like, I can't live without him. It's a good movie. The books are fantastic. Really, I'm in love. It's too sad for Jacob. I think he is a good wolf, but I know it's too hard for him. See the girl that you love being married with him enemy. Edward, it's really cute when he tells Bella that he had waited so long for her. Exactly 109 years. Bella, silly and considering she was still a teenager. I have to like skip through some of it. It's so long. Yeah. Uh, risking her entire life to save the one she loved. Uh, Edward and Bella have a totally beautiful relationship, knowing that Edward had waited for someone like that and that Bella was his compliment and always would be. She's just like <laughs> gushing about the sacrifices this teen girl has made for her vampire boyfriend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> <clears throat> um, all right, well, Crystal W says, uh, I love all of Twilight Saga movies. This is one of the books I read that I did not have to read. 
Twilight Saga <laughs> first movie, T Twilight, is one of my favorites of the Twilight Saga movies. Twilight Saga second movie, New Moon. Twilight Saga third movie, Eclipse. Twilight Saga fourth movie, Breaking Dawn Part One. Twilight Saga fifth movie, Breaking Dawn Part Two, <laughs> is also one of my favorites of the Twilight Saga movies. Even though my middle name is Dawn. And if you like these movies, you might want to see Snow White and the Huntsman movie that also filmed <laughs> in between these movies with one of the actresses from the Twilight Saga movies, and I believe Remember Me movie that also filmed in between these movies with one of the actors from the Twilight Saga movies. And the Fast and Furious Saga has nine movies I have seen so far, and they are all amazing and features most of the original cast with some new additions, but they do not replace any of the original cast ever. Five stars. Wow. There was, wow. I, they, I'm guessing they <laughs> ate a lot of magic mushrooms before they wrote that review. I, 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 that was a journey. That was a roller coaster. Man. It was. Oof. Option that one to Warner Brothers and make a <laughs> mint. Uh, my next one. Uh, what was it out of stars again? Uh, it was a five star. That was, was five out of stars. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sarah C. I can only assume it's uh, Sarah Chalk from Scrubs and Roseanne fame. Okay. Writes, it was boring, and honestly, Edward and Bella's chemistry sucked. It was so awkward. If you want yeah. to watch something that's better, watch Vampire Diaries. Edward no. is the Walmart version of no. Stefan. Two out of stars. Amanda is ready to go off. I will. Vampire Diaries is trash. <laughs> I think, actually. Shit. But, uh, it, you, you're more of uh, like Sarah Chalk. Are you more like a Vampire Academy stan? <laughs> no, that movie's that movie's brutal. <laughs> yeah, it is brutal too. Yeah, but they're all based on books. Fun hey, Zoe Dutch is in it, and she's fucking... she's wonderful. <clears throat> she is wonderful. Um, so mine is another five star review from A Lu O. A the J. Talented. Who's this? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, A Lu. Okay. <clears throat> Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever done before. Mm. Yeah. That was, one those, <laughs> that was one of those fraud accounts you were talking about before, right, Brendan? <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, that's the best part, is that they wouldn't have ever needed to pay anyone to say nice things about these movies. They don't need that. They have the power <laughs> of the soccer moms and the teenage girls. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm not going to lie about that. Guys, I, I wonder what you think about uh, uh, Jeremy J's critique here. As Jeremy J uh, gives it five out, of, uh, five out of stars. He says, I couldn't imagine Taylor Lautner as any other character other than Shark Boy, but I got told it was a good movie, so five stars. <laughs> He's like barely in this movie. <laughs> He got told it was a good movie. <laughs> so, so five, five, five stars. stars. <laughs> uh, are, we, well, are we questioning the integrity of the audience rating on Rotten Tomatoes? Because I think we do. I think this yeah, is how exhibit dare you. A. <laughs> the, uh, my next one comes from Robert P. So I can only assume it's Robert Pattinson. Oh, my God. <laughs> because he writes <clears throat> a bunch of more. <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> A bunch of romantic ruins another vampire movie. Half out of stars. <laughs> Watch Damn, me in that movie. Bitter. Watch me in that movie where I died in 9-11. <laughs> the end. Oh, spoiler um, alert. My last one. <laughs> spoiler alert. For Twilight wow. Breaking Dawn Part 1. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a half star review here from Lillian L. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry but I absolutely hate you if you like this franchise. <laughs> wow. So Lillian hates me. Lillian's coming for my fucking throat. Lillian Lemon. She's the co-owner of Lululemon. <laughs> she's coming after you. <laughs> I will scam people, but I draw the line at sparkly vampires. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. All right. I've got, uh, I've got one more here. This is from uh, Jasmine C. And uh, she says, normally I wouldn't use this website as a lot of people on here tend to be, how do I put this? Wrong. However, my friend told me to post this on here, so enjoy my opinions covered by squiggly dashes. I think overall it is a good movie if you are specifically into that thing. But if you're not, then it's just quite boring as the characters are uninteresting. 
Bella is nice and cares about her family, but that's about it. Edward is just sort of intense and always being super emo about shit. And all the other characters have one facial expression each throughout this movie. The start was good, as I liked that one of the people in the class made an attempt to drink some compost after being told to after being told not to by the teacher. That's kind of wild. But then after that, <laughs> I really stuck out for her. But then after that, when uh, when Bella is like in danger of being killed or whatever, it's quite boring because I couldn't really care less if she died. Although some of the scenes, like when she is in the ballet place, have good tension. Also, the weird vampire CGI where they get flung across the room and climb up trees and stuff just looks so stupid. So yeah, terrible movie, but very arousing. Four and a half stars. <laughs> <laughs> that took a turn at the end. It it's really a Shyamalanian twist. <laughs> oh, jeez. Jesus. She's like, this sucked, but guess what? Horny. Almost a perfect <laughs> score. <laughs> <laughs> Cold and wet. <laughs> uh, so my last one comes from Chris B. I can only assume it's Chris Benoit. And uh, he writes, it's not the best movie, but I do th- th- think it deserves all the hate it gets. It was still entertaining to watch. And so were the others. Three and a half out of stars. I think the double T. I think he's missing the do. He's this in the N apostrophe, because I think he means to say I don't think it deserves all the hate it gets. <laughs> I but his, yeah, I his, so. his review comes across as <laughs> I do th- think that it deserves all the hate it gets. And I'm giving it three and a half. <laughs> three and a half out of stars. <laughs> um. So this is just a real simple one. Three out of five stars from just D. This is the most watchable one. <laughs> Well, thank you, uh, Just Dick. That was a very informative <laughs> review. <laughs> there you go. That's what people are saying. I think those are some of the craziest <laughs> reviews we've read this so far from the audience. I Sam knew that Elliott really liked that movie, didn't he? He really did. And I knew Twilight would bring mm-hmm. out like the, the crazies on both, both sides of the critical spectrum here. Oh, yeah. But... Let's talk about things that we like, or I guess maybe like more, because Amanda clearly does like this movie. But uh, we, uh, at this point of the show, we uh, recommend something that we've seen recently, uh, some a movie or a show or what have you. So, uh, Nathan, I uh, just want to ask, uh, what you watching, bud? Well, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've kind of moved off a bit of the, the horror flicks this this week. Um, and, uh, I decided to take advantage of my, my ability for the Disney afternoon, uh, with the Disney plus. So I've actually been watching, you know, a fair bit of the, of Gargoyles revisiting that. Um, now, I mean, some of the folks who listen to it may have been around when that show was the thing. If not, do yourself a favor, check it out. It's actually one of the, I don't know, more grittier Disney afternoon cartoons. Uh, Jonathan Frakes swears a little bit in the first episode. It's pretty great. Yeah, it drops a bunch of f bombs in the pilot for Gargoyles. I don't know when he says he he would uh, if you pay a man enough he'll walk barefoot through hell. You know what? You hear that in a movie? Whatever. You see that on a Disney cartoon in the afternoon? It's a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, later they start, you know, introducing like you know Shakespeare lore and whatnot. It's pretty great. I thought you were gonna say, and then later it's just they just full on have sex for like ten minutes. <laughs> just bone. No <laughs> gargoyles yeah. uh, lay eggs. They ha- they have a rook and a rookery. Yeah. All right. Well, gargoyles. There we go. Um, Amanda, what about you? What you watching, bud? Um, I'm gonna give a. Uh, I don't know this. It'll probably be out by the time this podcast goes live. But uh, last night in Soho. Oh. Uh, the new Edgar Wright movie, uh, definitely a different speed from most of what you'd expect from him, but it was really interesting to see his take on kind of like a uh, like a horror thriller, uh, and I really like the idea of what he was going for uh, with the story, so uh, definitely recommend that. I want to see Great. that real bad. Mm-hmm. I've heard things. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I am going to recommend uh, a, also a, a brand new movie. Um, I don't think I really have to <laughs> recommend it too hard because I know a lot of people really love it. But I went and saw Dune. Dune. Yeah, and it was fucking great. Um, 
Um, I've never seen the David Lynch version. I've heard from everyone that has seen it that it's pretty terrible. Um, but this is like, and I, it's prime. This podcast, <laughs> you should do it for the podcast. I know. Yeah. Sting in a speedo. So. There's no speedos yeah. in this, unfortunately, not that I remember. But it is very good. Um, Denis Villeneuve has, I don't believe, has made well, one bad movie yet. Um, and uh, yeah, it's epic on every level. Uh, it's part one. Part two just recently announced. Woo! And Woo! Uh, yeah, it's great. And I will say, for those of you that are worried, out there, like for those of you that are not like you know big fans of the book like i never i didn't read the book at all i have no knowledge going in and for those of you Me that neither. are worried about that i say do not worry this movie is accessible for everyone like they make it they don't dumb it down but they make it totally totally easy to follow i think um mm-hmm. for a movie on this scale it's like it's like i imagine if you're watching like the first star wars movie as they, they do such a good job in that movie of like making everything kind of crazy but also like easy to follow along it reminded me of that in a way yeah um so yeah, yeah for sure check out dune and if you want if you if it's safe and you have and you can check it out in the theater i would obviously recommend you do that but if you have to watch it on hbo max or whatever then do that too dune dune yeah so there you go that's uh that that's that's the recommendations deleted from excel next segment uh nathan you have a, a buddy montrose monkington amanda a monkey is about to enter the studio you're very excited oh, i'm ready um, i'm ready she's been through here with him before i she? have that no, i have i have that thing where yeah. i don't remember stuff what's that called i don't remember oh, okay. what it's called right. <laughs> montrose monkington is here correct yes hello it's your good friend Montrose Monkington the Third here, and I just would like to invite all of you delightful listeners uh, over to my YouTube channel, Montrose Monkington TV. Uh, you can also be friends with me on uh, Facebook, uh, the Facebook group Montrose Monkington the Third Esquire and Friends. Uh, and if you'd like to tweet at me, uh, you can get at me on your little Twitter devices at Montrose the Third as the number three RD. Thank you. More later. Thank you. You're welcome. Amanda, thank you. Thank you for for forgiving me for making you talk about cats and uh it took a lo- it took a while, but <laughs> forgiveness is had finally. You got me back. I got you back. I got <laughs> you. I lured you back in with Twilight is what it was. You did. Yeah. You really did. Um like, but you I'll turn up for it. You have lots of stuff on the go, so <laughs> why don't you tell people where they can find you and what you've got uh, what you got on your on your dinner plate right now. Yeah, uh, biggest place you can find me and where I expend most of my effort is YouTube, where you can find me at Amanda the Jedi. Uh, I used to stream a lot. Uh, I just did a move, so I haven't been doing that as much, but you can follow me on Twitch at Amanda the Jedi. If you want to keep up with my stupid thoughts, you can follow me on Twitter at Amanda the Jedi. Uh, And if you want to see stupid pictures, you can follow me on Instagram at Amanda the Jedi. Uh, Right now, I am actually working through my YouTube channel, uh, a bunch of like current releases, but I'm also going through a bunch of those uh, teen... uh, movies that were really big so like uh, i'm doing the uh mortal instruments series i'm gonna do about divergent next so like we're going through it so if you were a fan of that kind of stuff or if you hated that kind of stuff like come along for the ride there you go and and nathan uh i don't know if you know this but amanda did a a nice nice little video on a movie we talked about old kickboxing academy (laughs) <laughs> see that is a garbage movie that is a garbage movie i would hope i would hope that if you put that movie up against twilight you would have to at least give twilight a little bit of a nod yeah, like a little so. bit of like a well one of them one of them is barely a movie <laughs> yeah exactly like well, yeah, i don't know what the also hell is happening has implied incest the other has actual, actual incest with a horrifying dark backstory behind it Allegedly, I've started Ugh. looking into it more, and it might it might have literally just been like, "Now we want to hire your brother," and she was just like, "Okay." I hope it's. I hope. So, I hope I, the dark backstory is not I true. Hope. Yeah. I don't think it's as intense as someone made me believe. <laughs> so. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, and of course, you can find us on all the podcast apps that you're listening to one of them right now, or or you can go to Age of Radio. Big time. Hradio.org slash uh, what were they thinking? You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at WWTT Podcast. Search for us on Facebook, Patreon. We're on Redbubble and T Public as well. Just search for us and we will be there. But that's pretty much it. Um, Nathan, I mean, I mean, maybe you should direct your questions to Amanda because she's the Twilight expert. She's the Twihard here. 
But um, <clears throat> she is. do you have any questions about this movie? Well, you know, a couple. Okay. All right. So, I mean, all right. So with a movie about vampires where they remove a lot of the pre-established vampire lore um, for the sake of a, a terrible skin effect that looked like someone... Well, let's be honest. It looked like Buffalo Bill went crazy with a bejeweler or bedazzler. And it, it, with a movie where I think it's fairly safe to say that Valium was just gobbled up like Tic Tacs on the set... And and with a movie where you know they, they take uh, such a, a clearly unhealthy look at at relationships, especially from the the female point of view, I simply have to ask about this movie. What were they thinking?